This is going to be one of the best miners to buy. If you're a small scale miner, if you need a quiet mining rig, if you want something very efficient, this is latest gen technology. This is best in class performance. This is a Bombax miner. And we've reviewed some of the Bombax miners before. We have the incredible opportunity to review this now. It's pretty big, but it's also pretty quiet. It has these three fans on the front. It's built with at-home mining in mind. It's basically just one hashboard from their big miners, the EZ100 and the EZ100 Pro. That is a massive heat sink on this thing. Their engineering team knocked it out of the park because they are dominating their opposition in efficiency. And this small miner does not lose any efficiency against the big one. Dollar for dollar, it's a little more expensive, but the cost on this is way more approachable for the average miner. This, <laughs> wait to hear this, is the Bombax EZ100C, also known as the Cozy Edition. I'm Bosk, what's up? You're on the Boscoin uh, Mining Farm, or you're watching the Boscoin YouTube channel. We're out here on the Boscoin Mining Farm. I'm gonna deploy this thing in here. Normally I wouldn't deploy a miner like this in an environment like this, but it's incredibly hot out here in Virginia right now. It's about 100 degrees every day. Uh, so I need to make sure that this is in a nice and cool area, somewhere that's not going to get heat soaked. This is a very powerful uh, and efficient for what it is. Mining rig is very profitable, and it needs to be firing on all cylinders or I guess all ASIC chips. Uh, so let's hook this thing up. It's an application-specific integrated circuit miner. It's a purpose-built machine. All it does is mine one cryptocurrency algorithm. Actually, this one mines three uh, algorithms. ETC hash, uh, ETH hash, as well as ETC plus Zill. And that's gonna be the kicker. That's the most profitable uh, place for miners like this to be. Integrated power supply here. We see we have a C13, C14 style connection, uh, on off power button there. Ethernet port, that's pretty typical what you'd expect. And with an integrated power supply like this, uh, which it doesn't say, and, and they should definitely you know, etch this on there. I think it's so cool. Like this is etched, that's not a sticker. I, I, I love that. I think that's so cool, but one thing that this miner is sorely lacking, right? We've looked at every angle of this device. Wow, that is really hot, the black. Wow, goodbye, finger skin. Ow! I burned my hand! It does not specify if you need to be on 200 voltage plus. I'm gonna contact them and get absolute clarity on this, but you should assume with something like this that you need 200 voltage plus, right? So you can do that with both legs of single phase and so on. Watch our beginner's guide on electricity for mining or our one hour fully immersive video on how to get started mining uh, but bottom line is no big deal I already got all that electric set up so let's plug this thing in in the pod all right we've got some real world mining profitability so I'm remoting into the mining farm and I'm, rem I'm remoting into this specific mining device, right? You need to learn how to find your devices if you don't know how to do that. I'm on DHCP, which is your standard internet configuration. Basically, you plug a new computer in, whether that's a laptop, your phone connects to Wi-Fi, or a mining rig. And then it generates a random, but assigned to it from then on, IP address. I log into my router, or you can use an IP scanner and get that info. Brings you to this page. Username, admin, password, admin. Normally when it comes to this stuff, you punch in an admin and root root and stuff until you figure it out, or you can just Google it, or you can watch our videos. Uh, so when you log in, this is where it takes you. You really wanna see the status page. I wish they would make the status page the default. Uh, so now I'm on the status page. We can see my uptime here, which doesn't seem to be accurate, but let's look at our hash rate, right? It's reporting that we are doing 4,060 mega hash a second on average. So that is 260 mega hash a second better 
than what their listing shows, right? What we are performing above what this was advertised to do. That's great. Love that. It's what you want to see, right? You don't want to be sold a car and it's slower than it's supposed to be. It needs to be like as fast as it's supposed to be, or ideally even a little faster, a little, a little bonus for the customer, right? So we see the mining pool information, fan speed, everything, chip temp, and the uh, projected power consumption of a lowly, right? This is great to see 755 watts. That's like nothing in the mining game these days. So if we go over to settings, you can see that you can select your coin type. You can go ETC, ETC plus ZIL, non-ETC, non-ETC plus ZIL. That would be the ETH hash mining algorithms and so forth. So you can go mine wherever you wanna mine. We'll talk about pools here in just a second. But I put this mining pool information in and this is actually the default mining pool information that came on this device. So I actually just changed my username, dot worker name. I don't use the auto IP suffix. Uh, I create my own worker name with the, everything after the dot, right? Passwords don't matter in this era, but I just slap in one, two, three. And then we have work modes here. Cue it. And eco came on cue it, which I think just means quiet. Uh, I left it on that. Uh, click update and it's good to go. You can reboot it for good measure. Uh, but the main thing you want to look at is click on the status and make sure your information in the in the user section specifically is here and then you can double check that on the mining pool i click over here to the mining pool performance and we can see uh oh, what's going on so on average i'm doing about four thousand mega hash a second which is about four giga hash a second but i did have a hash rate drop at midnight i think i have some weird error that i need to work through but i have a lot of miners fall off at midnight beyond Ethereum Classic mining. Uh, so that's something I need to look into and figure out. So I'm not gonna really fault it for this because this is a active problem I'm dealing with on my mining farm. It may be a combination of just my convoluted network with over hundred devices on it among other things. So if we look at Ethereum Classic, it's the fourth most profitable coin to mine ranked by its 24 hour mission here on mining pool stats. So a $3 billion market cap makes it one of the biggest cryptos in the world. Over a quarter million dollars in new coins are put out per day. Alternative, very popular mining pools for Ethereum Classic would be like K1 pool and two miners. And I really try to not use Ant pool because they already got enough going on. I have an E9 Pro on two miners. And just for reference and example, you can see that I've got about four giga hash of mining power, which is a very similar hash rate, right? To the easy 100 C, but it's using more than three times the power consumption to be able to do this. Taking this from a profitable mining rig to barely profitable, if not like just treading water on the actual mining profitability and returns. To be very clear, that's on the Bitmain Ant Miner E9 Pro, ASIC miner. We look at the revenue for the easy 100C. We've got one full day of mining profits. With that, we earn 0.3 ETC and about 97 zil. That equates to $6.21. That is like almost the exact same, okay, as the earnings on two miners with the E9 Pro. But again, our associated electricity bill for this miner is literally like one third of the E9 Pro. Furthermore, we're dual mining zil. So we get a bonus $1.50 of mining profits on top. So this thing is incredibly more efficient and more profitable because you cannot dual mine with the E9 Pro miner. At a 10 cent per kilowatt hour electricity rate, this would cost you about $1.82 a day to run. So to put that into perspective, the Zill that I'm mining almost entirely accounts for my electricity bill, which means that I am profiting over $6 per day on this miner at a good residential electricity rate. This is a very profitable, quiet, and just what seems to be long-term viable mining rig. These results are nothing short of impressive as far as I'm concerned. So huge shout out to Bombax for giving us the opportunity to review this device. And it is just still so funny that they have it dubbed it the cozy edition and literally etched cozy into the side 
Uh, so what really stands out for this device is the point 20 joules a mega hash. This is best in class efficiency for Ethereum Classic Miner. It is multiple magnitudes better than all of their competition. They came out of the woodwork with the best device for ETC mining. And they also mine other coins, which their tickers are outlined right here. We're focused on the two big coins to mine with this, but there are absolutely some profitable alternatives here in the mix as well. You're welcome to pursue an order directly through Bombax. They have a lot of fake websites impersonating their site popping up, right? So watch out for fake websites. Enjoy this wild hamster, whatever this little guy is. And uh, please make sure to use our link in the video description below. It's not a referral link. We don't make anything if you use it, but it's a short link that we have ensured takes you to the right website. If you're looking for a reseller option, Coin Mining Central carries the Bombax miners. They have the Big Boy Easy 100, and they also have the Easy 100C, uh, and they've sold two different configurations of it. There have been some 3,200 mega hash a second versions. Watch out for those and make sure you know what you're ordering because I have the 3,800 mega hash a second version, which is leading to the reported performance here and mining profitability and so forth. There's no disputing that these are expensive mining rigs, especially the EZ100. You could get into a used car for that price. Sort of, maybe. Inflation's not helping anything. But the EZ100C, while still very expensive, is a much more palatable price point. And the bottom line is you're paying a premium for that best-in-class efficiency, right? We're talking magnitudes better than their competition, which means that it will earn more than it burns compared to their competitor mining rigs for longer. The coin can go down further in price and it will still be above water because at the end of the day, if you're not earning much more than you're burning in electricity mining, mining just doesn't really make sense, right? At that point, if it you're mining $1 of coins per day, but it's costing you $2 to do it. You should just spend $2 in buying the coin. But if you're mining $3 a day in coin and it's costing you $1 or $2 a day, you're coming out ahead. And the whole benefit and end game of mining, other than having fun, supporting the network, unique business tax advantages, right? Consult a professional, right? But, the, but these are expenses, these are investments, these are assets for my business as opposed to just sitting in a coin and you're gonna be responsible for capital gain or at best worst case, it's a tax loss harvesting scenario. Point here being is mining has unique advantages, but the end game is to pay off the device and it still earns more than it burns. And pay off, I'm meaning like I, I recoup my initial investment in this device, right? And then it's, you know, like inspired by the good old fiat US dollar governments, so it's a money printed machine. So I want these miners to go burr. I want this subscribe button to go burr too. So thanks for watching. You're on the Bosk on YouTube channel. I'm Bosk. This is Tails, our CMO, our Chief Mining Officer. And uh, let me know down in the comments below your thoughts, your questions, your concerns with this mining rig. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks again.